For the second time in a week, Queensland Raceway is the focal point of Australian motor racing with the Shannons Nationals at Ipswich for round four of six of their 2018 series. This fantastic array of motorsport has already put on shows in South Australia, Victoria. It is terrific to be in the Sunshine State this weekend and we'll continue the journey to Victoria and the finale, of course, in Sydney next month. At the end of Champions Way here at Willow Bank is where you'll find us, Queensland Raceway, all part of this motorsport pre Precinct here, just about 50 k's rather, in fact, to the southwest of Brisbane. And there's lots for every racing enthusiast here, too, from open top prototypes to high horsepower sports sedans, production cars, and much, much more. Shannon's Nationals well underway, and we're at the halfway point of the Porsche Michelin GT3 Cup Challenge Australia. A brilliant Jim Richards endurance trophy race last night was won by the championship leader Cooper Murray, his young rival Max Vidal alongside him. Speaking of alongside, great man Greg Rust, he's run upstairs. Looking forward to calling this with you, great man. I've really enjoyed this class of racing in, in 2018. It's not overstating it. There are five, uh, six young competitors at least, if not more, uh, in this class that could quite, quite rightly stake a claim in 2019 the next rung up as far as Porsche competition in this country is concerned. Here's how this Porsche Michelin GT3 Cup Challenge Australia race played out, race two of three, the halfway point of the championship for the second time in two days. It was a great start from Max Vidal. He led the field into turn one, but this was a terrific bit of racing through turn four and five. Fallon first, then Vidal tried to attack to retake the race lead. Unfortunately, that just left the door open for Cooper Murray to go down the inside at six. That got him to second place. There was some good performances on, on that cold rubber that proved decisive uh, in the end. Chelsea Angelo in a good fight for third. This caught our attention early on in the race. That's a nice save. Here's the lock break for Bedow. Cooper Murray sees it going pear-shaped and makes a really good call as well. Smart racing and great awareness to see that car coming at the rate it was. Open up the steering. Didn't turn the car in when he could have and avoided an accident. So Max Vidal was then on the comeback trail. He and Dan Day worked in tandem to pass their way through the field. Brett Dalton found himself two positions further back, but would hold on to grab the win in Pro-Am. And then Murray hunted down Simon Fallon. He got within two tenths of the lap record in his pursuit as well. Ultimately though, the number 96 car from Sonic Motor Racing was good enough to hold on and to take his third race win of the season. Great result for the team and for Fallon. And good from the, the championship point of view too. These are the two guys fighting up in front. But Fallon's been the chaser coming into this round. Here's how they line up. The final race in round four of the Porsche Michelin GT3 Cup Challenge Australia. Simon Fallon, thanks to his third victory of the season, starts this one from pole. Championship leader and the points leader for the round, Cooper Murray, goes from the outside of the front row. Chelsea Angelo with good rubber on her pace. Number 38 entry goes from third. Jimmy Vernon next. Dan Day, Max Vidal with work to do from six down to our Class B leader, Christian Pancioni from 10th place. Lots to like in this one. Cooper Murray looking for a third straight overall round victory with a first and a second so far. Simon Fallon looking to mix things up. 12 laps the distance. Race three at QR is underway. Another brilliant start from Fallon. G. He's been good at that this weekend. Launches away, gets traction beautifully. Someone's struggling a little off the line there. What about Chelsea Angelo? Fighting for second position through turn one, but Murray just goes that fraction deeper, braver, maybe a little on the colder tyres and hangs on to it. Nevertheless, a great start for the number 38 pace entry from Wall Racing. Max Vidal is up to as well. He's in that Bob Jane team art 77. Looking to the inside of Angelo, who covers her line, but leaves a Porsche which down the inside for the South Aussie to dive down and try and wrestle third place away. But Simon Fallon, another brilliant start down into turn one. His starts have been perfect, Rusty. He ran up two spots off the line yesterday, and he's done the same. He's gained advantage every start he's made this weekend. Yeah, absolutely perfect. So it's Fallon leading the way for Murray, Angelo, and Vidal, but Vidal now gets it done. So on the run to the middle part of the circuit, moves up into third position. Now Chelsea trying to defend. Vernon's there. Dan Day's had a pretty reasonable start as well. But then ahead of Vidal, you can see that gap. Look at the advantage that both Fallon and Murray now enjoy. Day trying to have a look... Angelo's really got a hands full here. Vernon pressing for that, that position too. Yeah, that strong start from Chelsea actually caused her to be on the back foot in that battle she had with Max Vidal and through turn four, five, and six, just sliding the 38 car around, just trying to get some momentum back. 
under pretty serious pressure from Jimmy Vernon. I had a brief chat to team boss and reigning Prairie Cup Australia champ David Wall before this. He said, we think a lot of our immediate rivals took two new tyres for the race earlier today. So there'll be a little bit of a levelling factor in the condition of their Michelins in this one. Driving defensively, covering her line as you're entitled to do with the one move down the inside at turn three. A freight train of Porsches behind. Oh, around. Oh, no, Sam Fillmore. After a really good run earlier today in race two, that car's pointing in the wrong direction at three. Meantime, up in front. I've just spoken, in fact, to Barry Hay as I ran along the pit lane to come up and join you here. Engineer, of course, for Cooper Murray. He said he's looking more intense than ever at the moment. He doesn't like the thought of someone getting in front of him. This guy wants to be and he's showing all the right signs of being a proper professional motor racer. And he is starting to apply the pressure now. Car danced a little under brakes coming down into that final turn as he keeps that pressure on Murray. Meantime, Vidal has pulled clear of Chelsea Angelo and she's actually got a little bit of breathing space now over Vernon and Dan Day. I think Dan Day is keeping Jimmy Vernon quite busy in what is a battle for fifth and sixth position. So those two fighting it out Max Vidal with clean air in front of the Bob Jane Porsche from Sonic Motor Racing. He's the fastest man on the racetrack at the moment. 112.63 last time round. To make a point talking about tyre condition, I if Lewis Leeds might actually be in good shape as Simon Fallon just torches initially going into turn three. Remember, an unfortunate DNF in the race yesterday, but between his two sets of Michelins, he's yeah. 40 laps to the better. Take a look at the replay here. Well, was there contact there with Scotty Taylor? Hard to tell from that angle. It looked like it. Just uh, front bar to rear corner and just entering the shot sideways already. That big braking zone, the big stop. 240 kilometres an hour in six gear, a Porsche 911 GT3 Cup car. At this point of the racetrack, Cooper Murray's using all of them at the moment to try and find his way past Simon Fallon. Fallon's got the racing line. He'll go deeper. And that will force Murray to go to the inside. And one of the great things about this racetrack, Rusty, is the over-under, turn three to turn four. And if you do exactly what Simon Fallon did, you go from defending your line at three, you can still defend your line at turn four, even though the corner's the opposite direction. And look at how Vidal has closed the gap here. He's looking really aggressive. So that oh, Murray's won't stadium. run wide through the middle part of the track and loses the place, drops back to third. That's about the first mistake he's made in three rounds this year, Rusty. That was an error from Cooper Murray, a little bit wide. And he's got dramas on the front. There's it's damage. damage. Championship leader could be a key moment. It looked like there was radiator fluid That's pouring out. Yeah. I wonder if when he bounced out over that exit curb, it's broken a radiator hose, perhaps. Oh, big. Remember the championship battle. So coming into this round, Murray with the advantage over Fallon, but Fallon's had a very good Sunday here so far and continues to lead this race. This could really make things interesting heading into the final few rounds of this championship. So the margin was more than 50 points coming into this race, but with his closest rival leading, this is an enormous turn up. The guy in third in the championship is now second in the motor race. So this is like a big reset. I'm interested to see what caused that. Remember, he was battling wheel to wheel with Simon Fallon for the race lead. He went round the outside at turn four, slotted in behind, and then dropped a couple of wheels off on corner exit. I wonder if it was just a mistake, and that car now very much limping. I'm sure I saw fluid coming out of that car, Rusty, and he's almost at the back of the field. He's about yeah. to go to the midpoint of the, of the track, and one wonders where the, the Ash Seawood team might and call him in. I mean, there's nothing to be gained if he's last in the motor race here at the moment. Here's a look. So Cooper Murray, black and gold car behind. There was contact Ooh, front to is. rear. And I think it's punched the tow hook into the radiator. So, and the definitely fluid coming out of that as Ross McGregor has a spin at turn three. So there was contact. Just checked up a little bit coming out of turn four, Simon Fallon. I'm not sure if he was having a slide or slight hesitation as he grabbed a gear. Wow, that's a, that could be a key moment in this championship that ebbs and flows and like Porsche one mate racing in Australia at the moment, it's compelling right through the field and right through the championship. So a reset with seven of 12 laps complete. Fallon by 1.5 seconds. Max Vidal in second, which is a great comeback. Chelsea Angelo third. 
Jimmy Bernard for. Look at this. You made mention before of his tie position. He's up to six now. It's starting to threaten Dan Day. So good drive from Lewis Leeds after unfortunately missing out on race one yesterday with that fuel issue. And he was really frustrated with that too, Rusty, because he said it's the first round this year we've been really comfortable with the car. We unlocked something in it between rounds. We've had an issue we've been chasing all season. He said, I felt really comfortable, qualified in the top four, and then it broke. Just one of those motor racing moments, isn't it, where you throw your hands up in the air and the racing gods are against you on a weekend. They're against you. He's good mate. Uh, Thomas Randall, of course, had success in the sports van race this morning. Lewis was there to see him as soon as he returned uh, from the, the circuit. Yeah, they talked about that, that fuel pump issue, but he's driving like a demon here at the moment. He's pushing, continuing to push some good lap times from Lewis Leeds, but it's Fallon leading the way from Vidal. Vidal has the fastest lap of the race. The margin between those two guys is 1.5 seconds. That's Ross McGregor, Victorian, vastly experienced racer, and one of the most experienced now in the Porsche Michelin GT3 Cup Challenge. Despite that experience, just a little bit wide going into turn three. And whereas we think we saw contact there earlier, that was all on his own. This is Dan Day. He's in front, young South Aussie, well-known motor racing family from that part of the world. It's been a difficult start to his GT3 Cup Challenge campaign. They've had to reshelter his car between rounds as Lewis Leeds looks down the inside in a better tyre condition on the Yarra Valley Towing 23 red racing entry. But this has been a really solid performance. I thought his drive to fifth, Rusty, in race two earlier this morning, really competent, smooth, controlled, just brought it home, got some points. This will be a great confidence boost as he heads into the last couple of rounds in the championship. We're off to Winton next. So six corners here, 14 of them at Winton. <laughs> More than double. So it's a completely different scenario. And then the final round will be with the... Shannon's Nationals when we hit to Sydney Motorsport Park in September. It's a great Porsche race track. It sure is, and you're headed there very soon, in fact, for the Premier Class, which will have some very special guests again attending from Asia, a bumper double head around. More than 50 Porsches will be there, Rusty Career Cup Asia coming back down, which is exciting. A key round in the Porsche Wilson Security Career Cup Australia with Jackson Evans leading that championship with a slightly diminished margin. Dylan O'Keefe, a winner for the first time out in Darwin last time. So some new names and faces at the front of that field. It's hugely compelling. And it's a championship where literally hundreds of a second decide the margins. And the story for us from this, from the, the Porsche Michelin GT3 Cup Challenge is who will make the step up in 2019. Yep. And there's plenty that have rightly stuck their hand up and are showing the talent good enough to be there. Anyone in the top five or six potentially in this championship have the capability to jump up into the Porsche Carrera Cup. Two names I just mentioned came from Porsche GT3 Cup Challenge, Jackson Evans and also uh, Dylan O'Keefe, who are both very quick here. John Morris having a battle. This is Class B. Tony Martin is in the thick of the action as well in the Triffid sponsored car, the Motec livery and entry. The vastly experienced Victorian. His brother John is one of the most experienced drivers in this category's history. Fuel's got a great track record. Came into this weekend second in the Class B standings, which has been dominated by Christian Pancioni this weekend. Tom Taplin still second in class. Three to go at Queensland Raceway. Nothing's changed up front. You're not missing anything there. Let me go back and have a look at that young man. He's in the sandwich here. He's got Michael Hovey in front and Scott Taylor just in behind. Love the sound of that magic Porsche. Flat six running down that back straight. This is a pretty critical little fight. Now, my mathematics is not spectacular, Rusty, as you know. Chromaths is notoriously it's dodgy. It's better than mine. It's but better I'm, than mine. I'm pretty certain this could be a fight for the final step on the podium between Chelsea Angelo and Jimmy Vernon. With the unpredictable results we've had, Max Bedell was in the top two, then he dropped out. Same can be said now for Cooper Murray, who the first and the second and a DNF may well drop off the podium completely. This is a battle for a step on the podium finish for the round. Neither of these drivers have had one yet, so they'll be fighting hard for a spot in the top three. And what role will Lewis Leeds play in that? He's not a contender for a podium. He doesn't care about that. He just wants a strong result to this final race of the weekend. So we're seeing Vernon, who dropped a couple of car lengths behind Chelsea for a little while, but has he saved a little something for these final few laps for a shot at that third place? He doesn't look close enough at the moment. Angelo doing a nice job. Leaders still split by 1.3 seconds. Max Vidal's just punched out his personal best lap of the race. But the best laps between those two leading cars separated by less than a hundredth of a second. Oh, someone's gone off down at the oh, turn three. Way. Big, big. And there's two cars off down there, in fact. So, so Tom Taplin and 
That's David Gregg, I think, as well. Or is it Andrew Goldie? It's Goldie, the West Aussie. Has just run through the extra layer of tyre protection put down there. The leaders are on their final lap. So just gentle contact there for Goldie, Class B runner. Great story yesterday. Had a fight for 40 laps with uh, David Gregg for third place in Class B. No cool suit. Ooh. He was absolutely naked last night, but they both loved it, said it's one of the better races they've ever had. So they're OK. Gentle contact. Tom Taplin was the other one. He was running second in Class B. So just run off the road. I wonder if there might have been some fluid down yeah, there. Yeah, another lock, lock up for Vernon. So he's, he's had a lot. We have seen some other cars come through there safely, but, but I thought exactly the same. Was there an issue? We're on the run home. That's the main thing. Fallon leading and looking like taking another race win here. Vidal are looking aggressive. I love it when he drives in that manner. He was a bit frustrated by taking the same approach at times at Phillip Island, wasn't he? But it is a joy to watch these guys and girls compete in this manner. But Fallon, this is a good performance from him. It looks like Vidal's run a fraction wide, not the ideal line through the final turn. He's had a shot at it, but congratulations to Fallon who will take it out Two from two on Sunday here at the Shannons Nationals. Brilliant drive. Critical round to capitalise as well. So this was Tom Taplin, Rusty, and we only caught the end of this moment running out very, very wide and difficult to drive out of the gravel trap when you're that far in. So completely unrelated incident was Andrew Goldie just running off on his own. So separate incident. Just nerfed himself through that extra row of tyre protection down there at turn six. Take a look at the results for you from the final race of the weekend. Fallon on top from Max Vidal in race three of the weekend. Well done to Angelo. Another great result off the back of a good race this morning. Jimmy Vernon not quite able to snatch that final place from her. And we hope that he's at the remaining two rounds. He deserves to be. Absolutely does. Great job, Dan Day. Fifth and a sixth today. And Brett Bolton, well done wins the Pro-Am class, his first round victory. Well done, Simon Fallon, the winner. Round four of the Porsche Michelin GT3 Cup Challenge Australia. What a weekend. We'll grab a commercial break. Our thanks to Richard Crail for, as always, some brilliant insights. He knows Porsche and this class uh, so well. And we'll grab a commercial break. Come back with more on Queensland Raceway. Just a moment. Round number three of the 2018 Australian Prototype Series here at Queensland Raceway. Some of the fastest prototype cars in Australia set to battle it out. And the news from race number one earlier in the weekend was, was the Queensland driver David Barham in his first start of the weekend aboard the Chiron who dominated taking the race victory. Of course, we do have a pretty exciting title five on with the likes of Mark Lauke, John Paul Drake and also Jason Macris our current points leader involved in that contest. Let's check out the grid positions. It's David Barham on pole position for this one, ahead of Mark Lauke, back then to Macris and Sage Murdoch on the second row. Stephen Champion, the first of the radical drivers in position number five. Camilo Bonaventura in position six, then Grant Green, Scott Bingham, Ryan Pettit and Brenton Keogh rounding out the top ten. We'll have some onboard cameras covering all of the action for you, including on the reigning series champions car, Mark Lauking, West WX10. Race is underway. A fairly clean start, but it's David Barron in the Chiron. He gets the jump. Mark Lauke slots into second position. And then it's the two wolves of Macris and Murdoch who will be next in positions number three and four. All of the drivers using the aerodynamic aids of their cars to carry a lot of corner speed through turn number two onto the back straight. And let's head to our series commentators, Darren Smith and Richard Crail. This race is going to be absolutely ripper. We've got some championship contenders that need to push their way through. And already big moves happening. Jason Macris looking down the inside of Mark Lauke there at turn three. Big dive. Lauke was the big mover in race one yesterday. Started fourth. He passed Sage Murdoch. He's in the pink and black Wolf GBO8. He then passed Jason Macris got himself to second place. No one could catch Dave Burham in the Chiron. He was out in front and driving away. That's champion, car number 34. 
the Garth Walden Racing Run Radical SR3. It's stranded. He's had a spin at turn number three. He's facing the wrong direction there too. So they've got the crew down there getting him out of there. Let's hope we don't get a safety car intervention. There's plenty of time to get round there and pick up that car. Looking back down through the field there. There goes our race leader, Dave Sharon. And just having said that, here comes the safety car intervention. Of course, the Australian Prototype Series presented by Hot Wheels. Some really cool cars out on the racetrack and a really cool sponsor to, uh, to cover it off as well. So this is a look a little bit further back. Turn three. I think that might have been bon Bonaventura looking down the inside perhaps in car 14. Just contact the champion, turn him around. So after a solid run into the top five yesterday, this car was a strong performer, leading the radical class. Unfortunately, he's now putting in the wrong direction. And away we go again. Barham leads Macris, Lauki, Murdoch, Bonaventura and Drake as they charge down into turn one. Green flags waving. Well, if there's anywhere Macris can strike, it's on a restart. But the Chiron's got significantly more straight line performance than the Wolf GB08 CN car that's behind. And the fastest, perhaps, of them all is Mark Lauki. And you can already see them trying to break the toe. And it's in the second half of the straight where the West really hits its straps and the Wolf runs out of straight line puff thanks to their air restrictor. So Lauke looking dangerous. Sage Murdoch, teenager in behind him, young Sydney Sider, who's had a pretty challenging start to his Australian prototype series career. But bear in mind, he can drop your two worst races of the season at the end of the year. So it actually makes that double D in effort sand down not that bad. He'll get a whole bunch of points back in effect when he drops those two races off his final point score. And now he's back in form. He's had a very good run out of turn five. He'll look down the inside and use that extra air on breaking performance of the Wolf to get down the inside of the reigning champion, Mark Lauke, and make a move. He's third. Good pass. Mark Lauke, well aware of the strengths of that car. He goes wide and has a big Whoa. wobble. Goes right across the track in front of the traffic behind him. Doesn't lose a spot as yet, but it's the charging radical that's coming through on him now with John Paul Drake at the wheel. John Paul Drake will have uh, seen that in front of him now. Lauke is all skatey all over the road there. He will have picked up a lot of dirt and rubbish on the hot Kumo control tyre, but he manages to gather it all up. He's got a big charge now. Sage Murdoch is chasing down uh, Macris at the moment. Wow, huge moment. Mark's a very talented racing car driver, but I'd suggest that moment was as much good luck as it was good management just out wide there at the final corner. So had been past him, he was out in the marbles off the racing line and then just kicked up the dust and had the huge moment. Let's see that again. So Murdoch's clear. He tried the over under, so he turned in wider. So he had better mid corner speed and then just drops the car off the exit curb. And they run about 40 mil off the ground, these cars, and it fired it across to driver's right. And then that would have been a full turn of locking one of these cars to try and straighten it up. That's about all the steering it would have had. In fact, that's really a good catch. Left hand rear wheel off the back of the ripple strip there. The right front wheel came off the ground, so the steering was all but nullified there. So just held on for that ride, skated on the under tray. It's a teammate battle going on. The Jam Motorsport Wolves are going at it. Jason Macris is under pressure from Sage Murdoch. Coming onto the main straight now. They get away nicely. And a line of stern with each other. Sage Murdoch looks to the inside. It's not going to happen this time around. The Marina Mirage car there of Jason Macris just travelling very nicely indeed. You touched on those local Queensland cars that join in here, Richard. It really does throw some cats amongst the pigeons. We don't really talk much about the Minetti or the Chiron at uh, many of the other rounds of the prototype series, but uh, really good inclusion to have uh, some cars with some different... Uh, techniques of racing as well that need to be applied. And at the moment, it's the local guy, Barham, that's uh, doing it out in front. This is the battle for second and third, and uh, certainly the battle of the race. There's Mark Lauke now. He's actually closed that gap back up. He's really put the, the visor down and gone, right, got some laps still to go. In fact, seven. Uh, let's see what we can get back from these two out in front. Well, the more that these two dice, the more that Lauke will catch them and join in on the back of this battle. Yeah, unfamiliar with the Sage Murdoch story. He raced in Formula 4 last year in open wheelers. He actually qualified on the front row at this venue 12 months ago. Actually, on this weekend, 12 months ago. Uh, and was on course for a podium finish. We got taken out in the third race of that weekend. So he was 
unable to spray the champagne. It's the Morris Finance leaderboard. It's Sharon over Wolf GV 8CN. Another Wolf, another Wolf, and then a West in fourth place being piloted by Mark Lauke. The Radical SR3, two of them, Minetti. And then eighth is the uh, SR3 as well. So Dave the... Barham pulling away, 5.5 seconds to the margin. Mac, Chris Murdoch and Lauke, their cars are getting better as the race goes on. They're still lighting up the timing monitor with personal best sector times. Of course, they're all scrapping over position. Speaking of doing that, this is Pettit, Green and Beasley. Seventh, eighth and ninth position. Radical looks to the inside. That's car 27, Adam Beasley looking down at turn three. Key overtaking opportunity, does it? Doesn't get left a whole lot of room there. Green just tried to turn his car in. There was a little bit of a love tap between them. They both live to fight another day, and it's a free kick for Pettit, who drives away. Meanwhile, unseen by us, uh, Sage Murdoch has moved to second place. So he just set his fastest lap of the race in that car, 111.22. Barron holds the fastest lap overall at a 10.4, but Murdoch gets past Jason Macris. So he's up into second place. That's a big move. Championship leader relegated back to third. Lauke's still fourth. Here we go now. Have a look at this. Macris trying to reclaim that second spot on the road. He does it. Murdoch gives him plenty of room there. In fact, that was uh, some good, strong racing between those two. Murdoch didn't position his car particularly well there. And then it was Macris that just took advantage of that. And all in the meantime, just in the back of this battle is the charging Mark Lauke and the Lauke Flower Mills West. This battle is really, really strong. Macris needs good points to try and really consolidate his spot out in front. Here goes Murdoch down the inside at six. Macris blocks. He blocked late. Very, very late. Oh, I'm, I'm questioning that move because he defended very, very aggressively late in the braking zone into that corner. So I don't know if race control will like that too much. Anyway, it didn't really matter. The fight continues and their lap speed is not good. They're slowing each other up. Murdoch in the 12s last time round. Lauke was 1.5 seconds quicker than the two of them. So this is that move. Lauke under brakes, turn three. I'm not convinced Sage actually thought he was going to come from that far back. But the Marina Mirage driver, which is just down on the Gold Coast, by the way, you should go and check it out. Cool development. Uh, just sent it and went and got it done. So Macros back to second. Blue flags now waving for the West. Just coming up on now, there's John Paul Drake fifth. Six is Carmel, Camelo Bonaventura, Brian Pettit and Grant Green on the Morris Finance leaderboard. That was a big moment. So Murdoch was having a really good run on Macris down into six, but couldn't find a way past. So he, he committed, but the lapped car of Brenton Keogh was in the way. So he had to bail out, otherwise he was going to get boxed in behind Keogh and would have lost a lot of time. So he's got to stay within that striking range in the toe of Macris in front. The Radicals continue to squabble. Bonaventura looking at Drake here. JP just driving down the middle of the road. And now Lauke is in striking distance as well of Sage Murdoch. So he's closed right in and trying to get himself back into the top three. This is turning into a really enjoyable little scrap for second, third and fourth. While we watch the Radicals continue to fight. Which they're fighting out for fifth and sixth on the road. It's the Stoke driving events car being piloted by John Paul Drake this weekend. The last minute ring in for this event on Friday night and uh, driving it nicely indeed. I think even the seat fitting wasn't exactly where JP wanted. They've worked on bits and pieces of the nuances of the car overnight last night as they've had a chance to do so. This is now the battle for second and third on the road. Sage Murdoch really weighing in and putting the pressure on Jason Macris. And Jason Macris responding. The last 12 months of his career in the prototypes, he really has stepped up. Had a big win last year, first of the year at Winton, first of his career. First, oh, down the inside, Murdoch had a look, was just hesitating there because I thought Macris had run the car off the road and he sort of did, he went out over the exit curb at turn one and that opened the door for Murdoch, but with a double toe of sorts is Lauke, who sails past Sage Murdoch. He'll get down the inside in the braking zone and Macris will be his next target. This is a tremendous scrap. And with Barham cruising away out in front, this is the fight for the lead contenders in the Australian Prototype Series. Tremendous competition between two very different types of racing cars that produce their speed differently. So pretty straightforward stuff for Mark Lauke. While these two were scrapping, he hauled them in. The Jam Motorsport driver just committed down the inside. But Sage Murdoch, where he's been really good, 
is coming out of turn five. I don't know what it is, but that car gets great drive out of the second of the two left-handers on the infield here and allows him to make moves down at turn six. And now gets the switch back on Lauke and they'll run wheel to wheel to run into turn one. Sage Murdoch's definitely not done with this. Looks to the inside now, Fane's right back out to the outside. The west goes very wide, in fact, into the marbles and gets a fair load of four-wheel drift there. He gets pushed wide again, Mark Lauke absolutely driving the wheels off this west. I think that's probably the only, apart from that initial uh, spin that he had that lost him the spots and then through turn one, then it's the only ragged bit of this race he's driven. He's driven the car very direct whilst trying to catch this battle. Great bit of racing, that it was really entertaining. Wheel to wheel through turn two, which is a fast corner, long flowing right-hander. And now he's just broken the toe pulls away from Murdoch, who's back to fourth place. It was as high as second for a time. I wonder if in a lap and a half, Mark Lauke can go out after Jason Macris. So the Wolf, really good through turn five, especially it's quite an aero corner. So he uses that extra downforce aero grip to fire itself out, position for a run into the final corner. Dave Burham has started the final lap of the race in the Chiron. That's Three and a bit seconds out in front. He's just cruising around to bring the car home. Fine continues. Lauke with a big slide through turn one. Driving the wheels off the Lauke Flower Mills West WX10. Really good display of skill by these three races on screen now. Macris has just managed to pull a gap on these two. It's only uh, very small, but it's healthy enough to continue the, the last lap of this race. There's Lauke now sliding there. He's got opposite lock exit of the corner. A little bit of speedway type rally stuff. We saw the update from Tasmania in the Australian Rally Championship there, but Mark Lauke applying a little bit of oppo there. He's out of tyre, so that car sliding around something chronic. He's had to drive it so hard to catch up to these guys after the error early on that how I think he's used the Kumo up. And Murdoch's going to have a really good run down here into turn six. Dave Burham just stroking the Chiron home to win it. The fight's on for the final step in the podium. Error for Murdoch, blocks the break going in. He'll try the over-under and it'll be a drag race. Dave Barron wins, Macra second. I think Murdoch's gonna get this. Yep. Just edges across in third place. What a good battle for the final step in the top three. Murdoch across the line by just over 0.1 of a second. Last year at this event, it was uh, Lauke that was the only one that took a win away from Dave Barham. He's on top of the sheets there, so he takes the win by 1.9 seconds over Jason Macris. Then it's Sage Murdoch, Mark Lauke in the West, Carmelo Bonaventura in the first of the Radicals. John Paul Drake brings the car home. There are Grant Green, Brian Pettit, Adam Beasley, and Scott Bingham in the Mineta SSV1. So, a fascinating rolling start. Wheel to wheel it was. And no matter what he threw at the Chiron this weekend, Jason Macris just couldn't quite lead him. And had to settle for second into turn one. This was a great battle. Mark Lauke and Sage Murdoch swap positions. It must have been half a dozen times, if not more. Well, in this, they did it about 300 metres of track. They, uh, they swapped twice. Really entertaining scrap between the Wolf and the West. Unfortunately, Lauke, DNF, that's a strange, strange issue just as they thought they got on top of that. Thought that was a great move, trying to go around the long way. The over-under, that's what I was talking about with the corner exit there at turn six. And then the Radicals were scrapping as well. Champion was on the comeback trail and worked his way past Green in car number 10. Of course, the Champion would soon DNF. This was that cool move, right around the long way. He set it from a long way up, out too, and then just held that wide line. He actually could have come across the front of uh, the west there, but it was certainly a position that was then again abated a lap or two later. And there it is, Lauke just gaining that spot back through in the strength of the west, the uh, high speed at the bottom of that straight. His champion looking down the inside of Pettit. Pettit uh, not letting that gap go in the Minetti. The Minetti. And they drove around. There's Mark Lauke. He was withdrawing from the race. It's certainly no victory salute, but he certainly put the arm up clear in the air and let them know that he was going pit bound. Real shame there for Mark. Good scrappling through the field here, working their way past Brenton Keogh, who's new to the championship. That's the ex-Mark Lauke West. 
and raced at this track a couple of years ago. It's a good fight. Champion continued to work his way forward. Got as high as fifth place, but couldn't make any further progress when car number 34 stopped on the run into turn six, and that would end his day. So the honours at Queensland Raceway go to Dave Barham. He completes what he started 12 months ago and takes a clean sweep here. Jason Macra second, Murdoch third. The Australian prototype series continues in a couple of weeks' time at Sydney Motorsport Park. Darren Smith looking forward to that. We'll have a quick break before we go back for more live racing here at the Shannon's Nationals. Standing by for the second race of the weekend in the Sky Sands Australian Sports Sedan Championship. Of course, this series was a part of the action at round one of the Shannon's Nationals at Taylor Ben. Let's go to your commentators now, Darren Smith. And we've got an update, I think, up there, boys, as far as a hearing was concerned after some racing yesterday. That's right, Rusty. We certainly do. The Sky Sands National Sports Stands are already rolling around their rolling start. But Gary O'Brien right alongside me has been following sports sedans for as long as they've been around. Bit of controversy at the end of yesterday and uh, you got the update on the Sky Sands car of Thomas Randall. Yeah, winners yesterday by uh, country mile basically but uh, relegated to the back of the field and excluded from the results for using an unmarked set of tyres unfortunately. So Thomas Randall will be coming off the back of the grid and I know what his goal will be, a new track record. The real big story, I guess, is the fact that Steve Tomasi, if he gets a really clean run today, and there's a question mark over that car as well, Gary, which we'll get to in a moment as well, but uh, he can really, it's not sealing the championship, but it certainly makes it very hard for anyone else to come back from this weekend. Tony Riccadello yesterday as well, blown engine. The car's actually even left the track. Rolling start coming up, 12 laps to distance. Tomasi, Crompton, Lacey, Woodman, Bradford, Hargraves, Taunton, Smith and Michael Robinson rounding out the 10 to take the start now. Phil Crompton, not a sight we see often across the front row of the grid, but in the National Series, but in the State Series, he does quite often fill that role. Shane Woodman right round the outside, the Victorian. With uh, Viral Chetton, no, he's buried back down in the field. That'll That's be Steve Lacey, Lacey in there as well. So Tomasi's commanding the uh, respect right out in front. Championship leader coming into this round, Steve Tomasi, on 354 points. So he's gathering a massive points. Here comes Randall in the Sky Sands Saab. Yeah, and Shane Bradford, so another one had dramas yesterday with clutch issues and couldn't change a lot of gear. But as you did say, Randall is the one who's trying to read his way through the traffic before his tyres get overused. Therefore, he can have a shot at getting up to making uh, a bid for a new lap record. And he's already just passed Adam Hargraves in the Mark 2 V8. And Shane Woodman may be the next one uh, just ahead of him on the road. We've just seen a bit of a squirrel effect come out of the Chev Camaro of Shane Bradford. And you can see now that Look who's moved in right behind him. Right in there as well. So Shane Woodman, the fellow Victorian, just ease that gap there so he could get through. There's a big spin right in the uh, last corner there. Not sure who that is, but uh, Randall draws alongside now. The Aston Air Car of Shane Bradford. Great to see Shane having a full national tilt throughout this season. And he's sitting pretty, uh, pretty well also in this front. He's about eighth in the title hunt. Jeff Tanton, the one who had that spin down at turn six, but gets it going again. And here comes Randall, lines up Lacey down the back straight and just whistles his way past the Sky Sands Saab on the move in the Sky Sands race at the moment. <laughs> well, this is an interesting uh, storyline with uh, Thomas Randall. We know him from his exploits that he's done over in New Zealand, winning the Toyota Series and racing in F4 as well and uh, doing a uh, tremendous job in his career. He's racing in the Dunlop Development Series, which clashes with the last round at Phillip Island. So what he has to do is he has to win everything today. Stephen Tomasi also has to win everything today. 
but these two protagonists will, will not meet each other at the final round because um, his first uh, commitment, um, commitment is to the Dunlop Super 2 Series. So let's see what Thomas can do. And already made his way into P2, fastest sectors, and now a 109.68. We should see that come down a bit further before we're in the lap record territory. But oh, it's uh, certainly driving well. Billy Chetton has spun the Camaro down to turn six. He is the current title holder. Broke a wing yesterday's race and therefore didn't finish. But then managed to get it going again. And there's Lacey making his way down the back straight. Keep an eye on this lap from Randall. This will be the one where he can possibly get a lap record. Yeah, he's got a couple of opportunities from about lap three through to about lap six. So Steve Tomasi, the lead now, 3.6 seconds back to Thomas Randall. And we look back to Bradford, Shane Woodman, Adam Hargraves, Michael Robinson in the Bell Real Estate car. And there's the move down from Bradford. He's got a replay here of Beryl Chetton going around at turn six. Car number one took out last year's championship. And uh, it was stringing it together last year. He strung together result after result after result. Lock up there for Shane Bradford. Woodman all over the back of him there as well. Woodman had, um, I spoke to him this morning, yesterday in the heat, he had uh, blurred vision. He was actually struggling. When I spoke to him this morning, they were loading the ice into the, into the cool suit, which probably right now the ambience not so bad. But he was experiencing 88 degrees inside wow, the cabin. that's hot. Electrical problems for that car on Friday and into qualifying, but managed to sort them out. As you can see, I think Bradford's struggling a little bit. Uh, we can see the car just pinching tyres going down to turn one earlier. Uh, fastest lap for the race at the moment. We have Randall with a, just a slightly over a 108. So, Greg Rust in pit lane. We've got a little bit of an update for you with the Mark Cars team. Unfortunately, Jeff Taunton, you've had some sort of issue. What's happened? It looks like some of the bodyworks folded over or damaged the right rear, is that right? Yeah, it's, it's not bad. It's just that, yeah, we're so good on the brakes and the, the Monaros and the other big horsepower cars haven't got the brakes. So in the in the early part, you know, there's a bit of that going on. That's so it's fine. It's just a couple of panels. It'll be right. We'll come back. Good on you. Thank you. Thank you, Greg. Yeah, we've just seen Randall go through in a 107. Five, nine. It's just a smidgen outside the lap record. It's 107.50 that he has to be to. It's the Jack Perkins in the John Gourlay Audi that did that uh, lap record. So we're still in that window. It's up to about lap six or seven. The, the, the tyre and everything will come good. And I would expect in the hands of uh, our new race leader in the Sky Sand Saab, it will be uh, very close by. Have a look at this. Woodman down the inside now. Liam Hill from Riverside Racing, who's preparing that car so, so well these days, has uh, been working very hard. There was also a clutch issue with that car on Friday, so it's actually got a bit of uh, a bit of the old sticks and twine and chewing gum holding yeah. the uh, that side of things together. No, that's not what Riverside Racing do. They've engineered a beautiful piece of clutch for him, but it wasn't what they originally came here this weekend to run. So let's watch how it works. Change of uh, position there with the race lead going very quickly the way of Randall as he goes through and takes the lead and does a 10755 four hundredths off the lap record and East Michelin's uh, renowned for coming on later into a race so he's still got tyre life there that can possibly get this lap record so there's the battle again with Lacey and Woodman. He's put uh, Shane Bradford right behind him now. So he's now pushing on through. So that's for fourth and fifth on the road. Phil Crompton just disappearing down the road there as well. So started off the front row, finds himself in P3. And it's quite a, a healthy gap between those guys. It's good three seconds between that battle. Shane Woodman now trying to get past Steve Lacey in the Camaro. Camaro from New South Wales and of course the BMW from Victoria. Been a great uh, battle between these two, all through qualifying and yesterday's race. Lacey coming off the back of a state championship win at Wakefield Park last weekend. Here's a replay of the pass for the lead. You can see Randall through on the inside of Tomasi out of turn three, takes away the lead. Gary, do you get the feeling that we've got a little bit of Tony Riccadello, Darren Hossack coming through, the next generation of sports at Anderson? Yeah, but um, I don't think uh, Steve Tomasi really wants to put up a fight here. He's happy to take the points because he knows if he keeps getting good points, he's got this series wrapped up. Yeah, he's been a few years in trying too and he's thrown it at them all. He's thrown it at, at uh, the, those two I mentioned, Tony Riccadello, Darren Hossack, that famous coming together at the very fast first uh, corner. Oh. And down, off goes Woodman. 
gathers it back up, but he was ranging up onto the back of the Tomkin. Camaro there, Steve Lacey. Pulls it back in. This car's working very, very well at the moment. It's right in the window that uh, Shane is using it. Look who's nice. uh, come back up on the back of it. Bradford and uh, Michael Robinson. What a great shot of the back of the Sky Sand Sports Sedans coming out of that corner. Yeah. Don't you like the back of those Holden Monaros? Don't they look good? Yeah, they really are. They're a wide thing. Here we go again. This is Lacey and the Landau Science car of Shane Woodman. Off the back there. That's not ideal for a very hot sports sedan racing slick. And gets back on there. Gets it all gathered back up and selects it here and goes on with it. Here we are back again with the live pictures. And, well, you just pointed it out, uh, Gary. You've been doing sports sedans for a long time. <laughs> Please announce it. New lap record, 107.3284 for Thomas Randall. He was aiming for it. He wanted to get it, and he thought this race was the best opportunity. And now has the lap record, and who's to say that's the end of it? Oh, yeah. We've got lap eight, so I guess he might have probably used up the best of the cards. 12-lap journey. And uh, I know Jack Perkins will be watching, so Jack, unfortunately, your lap record for uh, the Sky Sands National Sports Dance has gone, but it's gone the way of Thomas Randall in that Saab, which is the multiple championship winning car, by the way. Yes, and look at this great battle that's going on. This is for position four, would you believe, is our race leader and new lap record holder. Can you get down to a, maybe a very low seven or even a high six before this is over? Good shots there into the car. New sponsorship on board with De Vilbus for this car this season as well as it bobbles its way through turn one there. These sports sedans do point out any impurities in the racing surface. Here we go. Woodman again on the back of Lacey. Brad, uh, Bradford right in the back of Woodman there as well. And here comes Michael Robinson. That car spent the entire off-season down, off down at Riverside Racing getting it entirely from the firewall forward rebuilt. Still looks the same on the outside, but everything under the skin has been renewed on that car. So Michael Robinson now goes down the inside of Bradford. We wouldn't have seen that in years gone by. So both the cars coming out of the Riverside Racing Garage are really pushing hard here this morning. Yeah, Darren Hossack had some laps in the Michael Robinson Monaro prior to last weekend. So just to get his ideas and uh, pass them on to the custodian of the car now, as Robinson takes ahead, as we've seen just ahead of them, Woodman go through on Lacey, but just overshoot slightly. Fortunately, he's on the right side of the road. He's well, left in our perspective, but the correct side of the road to take the lead away at turn four. The other interesting thing about the number 16 there, the BMW of Woodman, is that John Bow drove this car at uh, Sydney Motorsport Park recently. Here it is again. Woodman, big, big, big under brakes. And just as everyone does, drifts a little bit wide there. Huge set of rubber, the hand cooked rubber hanging underneath there. And trying to just get the power down, tromps on the, the loud pedal. Here's Robbo now, just can't dispatch with the number 68, the Aston Air car. Looks to the inside, the yellow Monaro, the black bonnet. Charges on through. The real estate agent from the Daddy Long Rangers in Melbourne. Yeah, I don't think that's tyre pinch from the Camaro either. That looks a bit more mechanical. That's the last thing we want right now, isn't it? Yeah. Kaz, is uh, some mechanical concerns yeah. with any of our cars. Oh, Lacey off the road out of turn two, but holds it together. As we see Robertson now line up the Camaro. Riley Scott built Trans Am car in America in 1993. So it's been around for quite a while. It was about the ninth car they built that year. So it's had a great life. It's only had one major incident in its life. And of course, Shane has restored it back to the colours that it's probably most best well known for when it raced in the States. And unfortunately, he's just gone off the road out of turn four. So he surrendered that spot quite easily. Michael Robinson in the uh, Monaro we were just watching there has had his best year ever in the National Series last year, where he got second. But in the last five seasons, he's finished in the top five in the championship. And that's getting to the line and receiving the checkered flag and being at every race meeting. So he's looking for a big year this year. It's going to be hard to knock the guys out in front up on points. But second last year, he was very, very happy with that. Multiple Victorian champion and does a ripping job. Well, he's currently fifth in the championship stage this, this time around. And the possibility is, with what's happened to those in front of them, he could end up second again. He could, yeah, that's exactly right. It swings and roundabouts of point score systems, isn't it? Here we're watching the Saab now and the De Vilbus car. Sky Sands support from Rusty French. Very generous to keep this 
sports sedan on track. They are super consumers. They'll use up absolutely everything that they have. Charging down the straight, heads off on his final lap yeah, for this race. He has buttoned out of it quite a bit. The car we did see a glimpse of just earlier, the Mark II car of Adam Hargraves. First weekend in that car, has driven a Mark uh, Paul Bocas V8 in the past. But this is his first uh, outing in the Mark II, the car that uh, Jake Camilleri drove at Tail and Bend. Uh, it was green then, now it's uh, done in a splendid blue wrap. And uh, he's doing pretty well for his first outing in the car. Very much a different sort of car to drive to the original uh, Mark V8. It's a lot more aero and it's less forgiving if you get it out of uh, shape at any stage. But certainly the one that's in shape at the moment is our race leader. It certainly is. This car looks magnificent. Of course, James Sarah took a title in the National Sports Sedans as Dean Randall Thomas's dad, who runs Dream Motorsport, took a title quite some time ago. And there's not a whole lot of that car left these days. This is a real aero development car. They're using air from under the front of the car and dispatching it through. So he lines it up to bring home race two for the weekend. He got to the line, but was excluded yesterday. And that is a result. That's a ripping win there for the Devilba Sky Sand Saab. And I reckon even better is the Domain Homes to Marcy Carr coming home in second, really consolidating himself in this title hunt. Certainly a good result for Steve Tomasi, who uh, is, a, I imagine, a bit of a nervous sort of person this weekend with uh, knowing the mechanics could bring him undone. It certainly won't be his efforts. And uh, another reason why they had dramas in the first race, they uh, tore a, a chunk out of the wheel yesterday in turn one with a slight touch with Chet and uh, no one's fault, just one of those things. And uh, how the tyre stayed inflated was anyone's guess. Yeah, look, the boys from Dream Motorsport have done a fantastic job with this car. Um, it's been the most reliable it's ever been, touch wood. Uh, but the car was really fast and you know, to break the lap record was fantastic. Uh, so yeah, big thanks to them and big thanks to Rusty French uh, and Sky Sands. You know, without them, uh, this couldn't have been possible. And again, thanks to Rusty for uh, supporting the category. Here's the highlights of race three and not often done, but in this, on this occasion it was with Tomasi going around the outside into turn one, takes the lead away from Thomas Randall as the two already set about uh, moving further and further away. Repaired Mark II car, well, Mark I car going through and a Mark II car going around. Adam Hargrave spins out of turn three. Here's the change of lead coming up out of turn four. A little pinch of a tyre was just enough for Thomas Randall to go through. He slipped on through there, didn't he? Uh, to full advantage of that. We knew that that was going to happen. All Stephen Tomasi had to do was succumb to the pressure that Randall was applying to him. Uh, there it was, and it was such a small mistake. Just about any other day of the year, you'd get away with it. This is where the spot for third on the uh, in the race nearly swapped around there. Phil Crompton experienced a huge understeer. This is coming to the check and flag there, and he gave it a real fistful as he got to the line there and uh, drove away. So took a win after a pretty torrid weekend for uh, the Dream Motorsport crew with the Saab. Of course, uh, uh, going to rear a bit for the first race today. Bring it home with two victories and a lap record. Really good way to finish the weekend, isn't it? Our next event, of course, is at Winton in country Victoria, and we're looking forward to showcasing all of the great categories that form a part of the Shannons Nationals there. The place you go, of course, to find out all the information is thenationals.com.au or our official Facebook page. A huge thanks to the volunteers, the officials that have once again worked tirelessly throughout the night and day to make this one a great success. We hope you've enjoyed it. We'll catch you at the next round. Bye for now.